All right, so we're recording. All right, so we're going to start. I'm going to show my screen here. All right. So we're going to be doing, and this is going to go out on video for people because there's going to be a lot of um, students that might be doing this after if we can pull this off. Uh, so it's going to be important that we do a good job. All right, so this is the World War II simulation student orientation presentation. Whoa, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah. So uh, our leader list is online on a, an, a uh, Google Sheets. Um, for this one, we've got a small cast, and I blackened out their names so they can't be chased around the country. Uh, so the leader list is going to show just the presidents, but we'd also have foreign ministers in larger classes. Presidents are in charge. They make the decisions. Foreign ministers, if you have them, will negotiate with other countries and advise the president and come to some kind of consensus. Year. So every day is a year. Now today we're going to start, uh, or tomorrow we're going to start out with 1939. And we're going to use an hour as our time frame since we've never done this before. Um, but if it's close to normal, we may just go with 40 minutes. Normally in a classroom it's 40 minutes, but we'll see how this goes. So every day is a day in, of a year in the war. So 1939 is the first day things actually start happening. And it ends on day 7 with 1945. So the order of turns go, the Axis will go first tomorrow in 1939. And the first thing they will do will conduct any war. Um, when they're done with war, they'll go into movement. Now, yes, when you do war, there's going to be movement for that. Movement is actually when you move forces, army or navy, that you did not use during the war phase. This would be things like trying to get troops into position, to either defend or attack another country, things like that. One of the things I also changed uh, for the online version on sheets is we don't use declaration of war sheets or invasion orders like we had. We're calling it battle plans because that's really what it is, is, is a battle plan of what you're going to do on the Google Sheet when we go over that. Then the allies will come up and it'll be their turn. And they'll go through the same process of either making war and doing their movements, uh, just like the Axis, and then the neutrals will go last. And usually the neutrals don't have a lot of war, but sometimes they do. And they, we will do as many turns as we can within that hour time frame before we move to the next year, which will be on the next day. Okay, we're going to show a little example here about how we conduct an actual move. So we're going to say that Great Britain is going to be attacking um, Germany with 400 troops, and that means they're going to have to move in some more Navy. So we're going to move 160 Navy into that North Sea Zone, and then we're going to transport 400 troops because we've got 400 Navy into Germany and so now we've got 400 British troops up against 6,168 German troops and so we've made our movement for the battle um, let's just say now that Germany wants to reinforce even though they obviously don't need to but we're going to bring in another 2,000 troops into Germany from Bohemia, Moravia. And so now their numbers are 8,168, and we're ready to do the battle. And Germany is the defender, so they get the bonus. Commence. And the Axis powers were victorious, which they should be. They had a huge advantage. So that's kind of a demonstration of how we can move Navy. Uh, use Navy to move troops. Uh, also, we can see now that um, the defending 
country can move troops in to help defend if, as long as they are connected, which Bohemia, Moravia, and Germany are connected. Um, now that Germany has used those troops in that battle, they cannot use them again this turn. So if someone else were to attack uh, Germany somewhere else, they would not be able to move any of these 7,825 uh, to help defend. Uh, by the same token, during any subsequent battles by Great Britain, they cannot use this navy any longer. Now, Germany could attack that navy, um, but Great Britain could not move it to move troops or defend or do anything else, because that goes along with um, you can only use troops in navy once per turn. Now, next turn, everything is starts all over again. All right, do we have any questions so far? I didn't get to see any of that video. I have a lot of questions. The video didn't show up for you? No. All right, so let's see. Did anybody else see the video? No. Nobody, no. nobody could see I the video? I was watching it from Classroom because it was posted in our old Google Classroom. That's where I was watching from. So I guess when you play it, I thought it was presenting, but I guess not. Okay. So what's your question, Blake? Uh, what, what's the deal with all these sheets? Like, what are those? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Oh, and the... the um, are you talking about uh, the battle plans and all that stuff? Battle plans, how to move troops. Yeah. Okay, so the battle plans, this is how you're going to initiate an attack on someone. Okay? Um, the attacking or the invading forces would be the these are the offensive guys and the defending forces are the ones that have to defend against this attack so in the upper left hand corner if you look on the battle plan you'll see that we've got army and navy so if this is a land battle you're gonna put army in the box below army if it's a naval battle you will put in navy so the attacker here if you look at the example the region that's going to be invaded is P1 of Poland. Do you see that on your map? Do you have your map up? Where's that at? That's the link on the when I added you to uh, period two. World history on the World War II simulation. I'm not in the world uh, history one. I'm just in the history simulation on my Here, Blake, I can email you the link because I have yeah. it. Yep. There you go. All right. Let me know when you got that map opened up. All right. Does everybody else have the map? Hey, boy, I sent it, so let me know if you get it. Right. And you got your top secret documents, right, Blake? Yes, I okay. did get that one. Okay. All right, thank you, Jaden. We'll make sure that everybody has everything for sure. Um, all right, so you see that you see where P one is right next to Germany. Yep. Okay, so that's uh, that's the battle we're talking about. So uh, 
on the battle plan example, it says Germany's going to move in 1,000 troops. Uh, they're also going to move in another 1,000 troops, German troops from Bohemia, Moravia, which is just to the south there. And the defending forces, uh, P1 has 600 troops in it, and P2 is going to move 1,000 troops from there, or Poland's going to move 1,000 troops from P2. So you can see at the bottom, it tells you what the troop totals are. Uh, it's not going to tell you the ratings or anything like that. Uh, and then that that tells you what the battle is going to be. So then I would take that battle uh, and I would plug it into the simulator and then the simulator would tell us who wins the battle. And then whatever troops are killed uh, will be off the map and whoever has forces left over is going to be the winner. So that's what happens with the battle plans. That's kind of what I was demonstrating that you couldn't see uh, in the video when I was moving troops from Great Britain into Germany. So that's what, if you decide to attack somebody, uh, when it's your turn, uh, you'll be using the battle plan. And you guys, you're, whatever your alliance you're in, you guys will want to decide which battles you want to do first. So you can, you know, however you guys choose to communicate. Obviously, I wouldn't be communicating directly over this. Um, but maybe you're texting each other in a group text or your Snapchat or whatever. Uh, FaceTube, whatever you're doing on there. Um, to communicate without everybody knowing what you're doing. That's really the only tricky part about this. Um, but that happens in class anyway. So that's what a battle plan is. So when it's the ally, or when it's, let's say it's the Axis turn, they're going to be filling these out, and, and I'm going to be doing them in the order that they come up there. So you're going to want to make sure you put them in the order that strategically benefits you. Sometimes it makes a huge difference about the sequence of the battles that you that you do, because if they move troops from one place, then they can't move again. Um, that may be a part of your strategy. You know, like, you know, I've told you guys this before. This is not like playing Risk. This is like playing six level chess. You have to think about what your opponent's going to do and what you might do to counteract that. And then what are they, how are they going to react? Because you can get them to do things to open up other opportunities in other places if you do it in the right order. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what the battle plan is. So remember, as a group, the more you guys cooperate and work out your strategy together, the more successful you're going to be. All right, so let's go. Any other questions before we move on? All right. Let's go. Uh, we'll move into the next thing. Uh, I wish I could. I think when I am. Can you guys see my screen right now? Yes. Well, just not your screen, but like you. We can see you. You can see me. So I'm going to try. Let's try this. I think I might know what's going on. I think when I go to play that, if I'm going to go, I'm going to push present now. And I'm having them show my entire screen. Okay, and now I'm going to bring... I think I just can't... I can't play this, I think, is the problem. Um, if I play it, then you can't see it. So, can you see it now? My slide, army rating? No. You can't see it? Uh-uh. Nope. I thought you guys could see my screen. How come I can see it? I don't know. So what can you see right now? Nope. Yep. Just me? Yep. I thought it said... Hmm. That's weird. Oh, I see. Let me see. Cancel. Okay. Chrome wants to share the contents of your screen and move you on. Choose what you'd like to share. Okay, now. How about now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, how about, can you see it now? 
Yeah. 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 Now you can see the presentation? Okay. Yes. Oh, there we go. Learn something new every day. Okay, so the next part uh, is another thing that's kind of a little bit complicated. Uh, the army ratings. Now, some of these, some of these guys uh, that were on the, um, who have done this before, knew in World War One the rating stayed the same. Uh, in World War Two, it's different because now the resources can make your rating go up or go down. And so let's say, for example, a country has a military rating of three to start with. And now they have natural resources. So in our little example here, um, not to hide that, uh, it says that they, they need two credits of oil and they have one credit. So that means for oil, see now each one of these natural resources is worth one point in your rating. So if you had all the natural resources that you needed, you would add four points to your rating, which would make this particular country be a seven. So in this, in, in this example, they have one credit of oil and they need two. So that gives them 0.5. They have one credit of iron ore and they need one credit of iron ore. That gives them a full point for iron ore. That's the most you can get. If you had 25 credits of iron ore and your need was only one, you're not going to go any higher than one. So it doesn't do you any good to have more resources than you need. And we'll get to what to do with that later. Coal, they need five credits. They only have one. That means they're at 0.2 for coal. And they've got seven credits of rubber, and they need 10, so they're at 0.7. So you add those four up. That comes out to 2.4. You add that to your original military rating of three. That gives you an overall armed forces rating of 5.3. Four. So, uh, that tells you that when you capture or transfer resources to another country, um, you can help get their, like your allies, let's say. If you do that, your allies are going to get more powerful. Or let's say you take over some resources from your opponent countries. That's going to take away resources from them. That's going to lower their rating and make their army less powerful. And see, what that shows is the resources are in the regions that they were in World War II. And that's what makes those regions so strategically important. Like, for example, the oil in the Caucasus. That's a very strategic uh, place in World War II that the Germans desperately tried to get. Um, rubber in Asia is another one. Iron ore uh, throughout Europe, the United States, uh, places like that. So resources are key because the higher rating you have, the more powerful your armed forces are. Any questions about that? No. So when you take over a country, whatever resources they have, you don't have to transfer them. They automatically go into your stockpiles and they come out of their stockpiles now on the map it's going to show the resources on the map will not change because on the map like if they have 11 credits of oil that's always going to be there it might be in your stockpile because you've taken it over but it's not going to change on the map some people get confused by that and say well how can there be 11 credits of oil well you can't move an oil well Okay, you can get the oil into your stockpiles because you own the territory, but you cannot move a coal mine or an iron ore man mine or a rubber plantation as it were back then. So that's how the ratings work. The war maps. So here uh, you can see the Axis powers are yellow in color, the places they've taken over, the Allies are orange. The neutral powers are a light green, and the non-involved countries are gray. Natural resources, the black squares are oil. The green squares are rubber. The red squares are coal. And the maroon squares are iron ore. Now, this is a unique feature for World War II. We have the Maginot Line. 
The Maginot line, I think it cost them somewhere around $100 billion to make this, which back in the 1930s and 20s was a, a lot of money. And it's an impenetrable fortification. You cannot attack through it unless you control F1. And that means, for the most part, that Germany can't attack through there to get to France. Um, and that's a simplified version of what really happened. So any questions about the Maginot Line? It really only deals with France and Germany. Okay. The Baltic Sea. So this is an important part of World War II. Baltic Sea is open at the start of the simulation. Uh, if one country were to control both Norway and Denmark, they could close off the Baltic to navies from getting in there. Uh, you can see that the British have a much larger naval force. So if Denmark and Norway to, were to fall to the Germans, then they would not, Great Britain would not be able to get into the Baltic. So you have to control both of those, otherwise it's open. Non-involved countries. These are countries that were not involved in World War II. Uh, Portugal, Spain, of course, had just, you know, we didn't get a chance to learn about this, but Spain had a civil war right before World War II uh, that really wrecked their country. Um, so they were trying to rebuild while Europe was trying to um, annihilate itself. Turkey, Switzerland, and Mongolia and Asia are all countries. You can't attack them. You can't move through them. You can't put troops on them or do anything with them. Pretty simple. Now, there are some unmanned countries, which means nobody controls them. Now, these could be strategic for you, so they can be taken over. They don't have any resources, but they could have a strategic value. And these are the countries of Denmark, Albania, uh, the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, and Greece. And they don't have leaders either. All right, transfer or capture resources. So, if on the first day you wanted to transfer some resources, this is how you'd do it. All right, we're going to be showing you how to do a transfer of resources in the online version. So we'll start with, we have to put in the source country. So in this case, it's going to be the Soviet Union. The target country is it's going to Germany. So we're going to put Germany in there. The year is 1939. So we have Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler. Now in the real simulation, you'd be putting in your student names as the leaders of those countries. And so now the first resource that's going to go out is going to be two units of coal. And the source for that is Belarus, because it has to come from a specific target area. We're going to go four credits of iron ore, and that's coming from the Urals. Uh, there's obviously no rush, no rubber in Russia. Uh, we're going to have 4.5 credits of oil, and that is going to be coming from the Caucasus. And that's how you do a transfer of resources. And remember, that will go into effect um, the next day. So if you transfer that stuff on night in 1939. Um, it would be ready in it in your in your storage depots by uh, 1940 at the start of the game. And if you were to lose, or if the Soviet Union were to lose those resources, um, then they would go back to where uh, whoever took it over. And then the teacher will put in an X, which means this has already been put into the system. Uh, when you take over resources, uh, it automatically goes into your storage if you are the one that took it over. But when you're transferring, it always goes on to the next day or the next year, however you want to look at it.
Okay, one thing to remember, you do have a View Resources tab on the World War II Simulator, but uh, it's the first thing to glitch. So you're going to want to use that sheet, the Natural Resources Worksheet, to keep track of where your resources are going, uh, whether you've lost them or whether you've transferred them to other people. Um, it may be right or it may not be right. It is right in the system. Whatever we put in does go where it's supposed to go, but the view part of it is the first thing to glitch. Um, and this has a ridiculous amount of calculations going on. It's a very complex algorithm. Um, it's way beyond my math skills. So um, just remember that. You've got to keep track of what you're doing on that worksheet, and then you should be fine. Any questions about that? Where's that sheet at? It's with the other, it's it's one of the tabs on the World War II uh, sheet. If we go, do you find it? Nope. Like where the leader list is, it's down at yeah. the bottom, then sheet over. Uh, so, on, you got battle plans, you looked at that, now go to transfer of resources. See on the bottom? Uh, you were at the battle plans, weren't you? I was on my um, top secret document thing. Okay, if I you, don't know. If it, battle plans. Uh, let me just let me reshare it with you. It's the easiest. All right. So, uh, that's the transfer of resources. You can start doing that uh, tomorrow. Um, and again, it won't go, it won't be in your stockpiles until the next day. So, anything you transfer in 1939 will be in your stockpiles at the beginning of 1940. Any questions about that? And there should be plenty of those. I put quite a few in there. If we need more, I can just copy and paste more in there. Um, but that should uh, be good for transfer of resources. Okay, so moving on from there. The next one is the keeping track of your natural resources. All right, let's take a look at the natural resources worksheet calculator. This is kind of a way for students to keep track of the resources that they have acquired and that they have transferred to other countries. Uh, we're going to say that we're Japan and we're going to use a fictitious military rating of one. And we're going to say that Japan has taken over the Dutch East Indies. The amount of resources that they have, we're going to say for oil, is five. Actually, let's say one. And what they need is five. So we know what they need. Uh, their overall rating uh, says they're at a point two uh, because they have one credit of oil and they need five to fully um, fuel their army. And so we're going to say that we've taken over the Dutch East Indies, which means we have acquired resources. And in the Dutch East Indies, we'll say they have eight oil. And so now, uh, as you can see, our oil rating has gone to a 1.0, which is the most it can be. And we also have a surplus of four uh, that we can share with our allies. So let's say that we decide we're going to transfer now. We're going to transfer some of our excess resources to Germany. And so this is a transfer. It's going to be a negative number. So we're transferring four credits of oil. Uh, now you can see that our rating stayed the same because we still have what we need, which is five credits. Um, so we still get a 1.0 for oil. And now we've got an overall rating of 2.0 because we've only used one, uh, one of the resources. And you can see we have boxes for iron ore, 
coal and rubber. So all these resources would be taken care of uh, on this. And this helps keep track of what you've done and what you've taken over. Um, and you should be able to use the view resources sheet to uh, see how much you have. Uh, but you wouldn't be able to see who you've transferred and all that stuff to. So this is a good way to keep it. We've got four different uh, boxes down here, tabs, so that if you have more than one country, you can keep track of your resources separately of where they've gone to, uh, and that'll just help keep you more organized. So, yeah, that's the old Excel sheet. Uh, the Google Sheet one is... Uh, the same as that uh, and it does the same thing so you'd fill it out just like that this this is important because it's so easy to lose track of where you've got stuff you don't want to end up making yourself have a negative rating uh, and you know bring your your uh, your rating way down so when you go into battle you got you know almost nothing for a rating because you're you're gonna get wiped out and the other side's gonna really make some hay so, any questions about how to keep track of that? Yeah. So, which sheet is it? It's on the same. It's on the same Google sheet uh, that we were talking about. No, it's on the other one. Uh, let me pull it up here. I think that one was on. It should be called Natural Resources Worksheet. If you go okay. go in, go under World War II in your regular world history account for classroom. I don't have that. Wait, so do you use the IXL one or the one on the Google spreadsheet? I'd use the Google spreadsheet. So we don't even have to worry about the other one. The IXL one. Oh, no. Okay. No. I don't have the Google spreadsheet one. And then you, you want to make sure, yeah, I'll get it to you. You want to make right. sure you have, uh, just send me an email, Blake, and I'll get it as soon as we're done with this. Um, make sure that you make a copy of that so so nobody else has a copy of what you're doing. Because um, everyone will need their own copy of that document. Um, and I can reshare it with you. Uh, easy if you send me an email, too. So... Any other questions about that? And that's something you're going to want to talk about probably after we get off this with your when you guys meet with your alliances, however you do that, uh, about resources and trying to get things, uh, trying to build up your armies uh, to be as powerful as you can make them by 1940. So the important thing about resources is you want to make sure you have everything you need, but you also want to make sure that you're, you take away things that your opponents need so that you can uh, make their ratings go down. That's kind of critical. All right, we'll move on to the next one. I'm still trying to find that Google spreadsheet. If you sent it in an email... Okay, I can reshare it with you guys too. I can reshare it with the whole group. Just make sure you guys make your own copy of it so that you you're not showing everybody what you're doing. Jaden, I just sent you a picture of it. Okay. Okay. So the read-only maps. You should have a link to the read-only maps. Um, with the new Google, the new when I made the new classroom. Um, when we get done with this, I'll go through and make sure everything is added on there so that you it's a lot easier for, especially you got sophomores uh, who didn't jump into the world history one. I'll make sure everything is on that one. Um, I just thought about that earlier. So the read-only maps, uh, there's a link there that you'll have. When you click on that link, you're going to see the map that I have. <laughs> Every time you refresh your browser, that map will update to what my map says. So after a battle is completed, you're going to want to refresh your browser, and then you'll be looking at the same map that I'm looking at. Uh, and so that can be shared anywhere. That link goes anywhere, and you can't do anything to it. Uh, it's a view-only deal, so you don't have to worry about messing anything up.
The national strength sheet uh, shows, uh, this is kind of like the World War I intelligence sheet, uh, but it does show where all the resources are located. And this will be a huge part of your strategic plan to either acquire the resources you need or to take away resources from your opponents so that their ratings are lowered and it makes them weaker. Um, that'll be key, and that'll be another big uh, talking point when you guys are working out your strategy uh, in your alliance groups. So really all this shows is the strength of the armies uh, as far as their numbers, and then shows where all the resources are located in the world, which are also viewable on the map. But it is kind of handy to have when you're talking strategy. Where's that at? That I'll share with you too. That's all with the other documents. Now the alliance certificates, okay, so this is different. For the online, we're going to have our alliance tab. This is where you're going to do alliances, and I made an example here at the top. So if you are making an alliance and you want it to be public, then you will put it on this sheet. You do not need to put any alliances that are already there at the beginning of the game. Okay, that you don't have to do, but uh, and also, if you are making an uh, making a new alliance, then you're going to want to put that on this sheet. Now, if it's a secret alliance, do not put that on here because then everybody's going to know about it. Nobody needs to know about that but you and the and the country that you're making it with. Okay. Any questions about that? This just supplements the little sheets that you use to um, that we use in class obviously we can't do that so we're gonna put it on here and so if you decide you're going to want to uh, if you wanna end that alliance then you're gonna wanna take your signature and your country off that and erase it uh, so it's no longer up there now anytime you want something to be announced publicly over our video chat um, you can just get my attention, say, hey, I want to make an announcement, and you say, hey, and you tell what alliance is, because everybody's not going to be looking at the alliance sheet all the time. They could be in, you know, doing all different kinds of things other than staring at that. Uh, so make sure you let us know if it needs to be public or not. Any questions about alliances? The only thing you got to remember is do not go against your objectives. Don't make an alliance with somebody that is your known enemy. That would be bad. And even though the, none of this is graded, we still don't want it to go off the rails because we are trying to simulate the um, actual World War II. So, the only peril with not honoring your alliance is that people may not want to, will not trust you if you uh, go against it. Um... Now, also, there are defensive alliances. That means that you only have to help them if they are attacked. And there's no guarantee saying that they will help you either. So you have to remember that. No one can force anyone to do that. Uh, we already talked about our declaration of war, which is called a battle plan now. Top secret documents. Um, everybody should have theirs, correct? I hope. Yes. Okay. If not, you can email me and I'll send them to you. Uh, remember, this has you, you have to read through the whole thing. The summary, the objectives, all the things that you, you don't want to make any of those mistakes. The world situation summary is what we will read at the very beginning tomorrow before we get started. Uh, there's also a map that goes with that. Uh, that'll be in the materials that I share with you uh, right after this. Um, if you don't have them already. And this kind of sets the stage for when the, the uh, war will begin tomorrow. And it shows who's allied with who uh, from a map perspective. Uh, those of you that are doing this to get credit for pass-fail, uh, you'll have to fill out the report. Um, and those of you that are not, do not have to fill it out. Um, but you do need to follow your objectives. You can also get a grade for the journal if you're um, working on pass-fail. Um, 
Helpful advice. Uh, I would do a lot of planning, and then I would be ready to react to what could happen. Um, it's going to be a little bit different online than it is in class, but I'm sure the emotional part uh, will still be there. So, um, this is what uh, you need to do uh, if you're going for credit. just gives you a little to-do list. Um, the first thing that I would do is make an assessment of what are my needs for natural resources. I want to make I want to get my four points. Whatever my military rating is, whether it's a one or a six, I want those four resource points. How am I going to get them? Well, I'm either going to get them from my allies through a transfer or I'm going to go take them. Now, take them is kind of like the give and take um, with points like in a track meet. Now, if I score higher, like if I take over a country, not only do I get those resources, but my opponent does not get those resources. So it's like a double, uh, it's it's like a double whammy for the opponent. You're stronger, they're weaker. That's a better situation for you. So think about what things you need, and then work with your allies to try to get them. The idea is for one side to become uh, more powerful obviously to try to win because this one is even more up in the air than world war one was you never know who's going to win this one it's going to come down to just a few things like it always does um any questions so far uh, um how do you use the uh battle plans sheet again okay so we'll go to battle plans now, if you're going to attack somebody, if you look in the example up here, uh, first you have to tell me, is it an army battle or a navy battle? Because you can attack navy to navy, uh, or you can attack um, army to army, a land battle, basically. So you have to put in what place are you invading. In the example, I use P1 of Poland. So if I go up to my map here, that means I'm going right here. And so I would be dragging however many troops that is into uh, Poland for this attack. And then Poland would be able to move troops from P2 in if they could. Now, other than that, it'd be really hard for them to get any help in there because there's really they're really kind of cut off and isolated. So in the battle plan, uh, it kind of tells you um, this is the invading forces. And there was a thousand troops out of Germany and a thousand German troops out of the Bohemia Moravia Protectorate, which is controlled by Germany. They're attacking P1, which has 600, and then Poland's bringing in another thousand from P2. Now, this is just a fake example. They don't have a thousand, I think they have a 400 over there. Um, and then. That tells me the battle that I have to put together. So Poland decides whether they're going to reinforce with any or not. And then, of course, they did. We'll put that example. That's more realistic. And so you've got 1,000 troops against 2,000 troops. And then we do the battle on the sheet, on the map, I mean. And then, you know, who's ever got troops left over? Uh, those leftover troops will show up, and the, the ones that are defeated will be gone, and we're ready to move on to the next battle, whatever that is. So every time you want to attack somebody, you have to fill out a battle plan. In whatever order they're in, that's what I'm going to follow. And like I said before, that's kind of important for you to make sure you know uh, that people, you guys coordinate what order you want things to happen because it could make a big difference in how the other side reinforces or whether they can even reinforce or not based on the order that you've uh, decided to conduct these battles. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and I move troops by using the battle plan too? Uh, no. You mean like after you're done with war and you want to move some stuff around? Like, let's say before I want to fight someone, I want more troops in some spot, and I move them over, where do I need to That's all, yeah, that would all be in this, in the battle plan. So, like here, I said we were moving 1,000 troops from Germany, and we were moving 1,000 from Bohemia, Moravia. So, if we go to the map, we could move another 300 out of East Prussia into P1, and we would have to put that in the battle plan. 
So once you once you have you're ready for that battle to happen, you cannot add more troops. Let's say that Poland brings in you know five thousand more troops somehow. Um, then you can't say, oh, well, I'm going to add more. Once you've said that this is what you're doing, you have to stick with that. Now, let's say you do this battle and you lose. There's nothing saying you couldn't move more troops from, uh, from uh, Germany into uh, P1 and have a second battle at the same place. Because you didn't use all your troops in Germany um, the first time that you conducted a battle. Any troops that you did not use, you can still use. If that makes sense. But let's say you go into P1, you win P1, and you have 2,000 troops left. You can't use those troops until the, ne the next turn when it's your turn again. So then a year later, so the next day. No, not a year later, the next turn. Oh. So like when you do all your war, then you'll go into movement. And then you'll move anything that you didn't use during that battle. Okay? And okay. That, that might be moving stuff around because you feel there's a threat somewhere or something. Once you're done with that, your turn's done. Then the allies will go. Then the neutrals. And then it'll come back to the axis again. And once it comes back to your turn again, everything is free to move again. Does that make sense? How do we do the movement part? Like out after war when we want to do movement? That will that... be that you guys will just tell me over this okay. over the video conference. Because you're all gonna be going, you know, you'll all just your uh just your uh alliance will be going at this at you know doing that movement so you'll just say okay germany wants to do this movement and then i'll do i'll move stuff around and you can refresh on your map and get it because that shouldn't be a big deal because it's all your alliance going at this you know okay that really doesn't matter too much so then you guys will all make your moves for the for your alliance and then it'll come back and once you're all done and nobody wants to do any more movement, then we'll go to war for the next group. So that'll just be really voice. We won't. We don't have to type anything out for that. You're just going to tell me uh, all the moves you want to do as uh, as we're going through movement. But the battles have to be put onto the thing so that I know exactly. Um, where everything is and that and actually that won't be such a bad thing even if we were doing this in class because then you'd have a really good record of what actually happened during the simulation uh, when otherwise usually we would only have the little paper slips in a big pile um, so that's that kind of gives you a good idea even though you're not required to fill out the report uh, for this particular one this time Any other questions? So this uh, sh this map is our sheet. Like this is the thing. The map. The you talking about the simulation map? Yes. Yes. Yep. That's Perfect. that's where all the battles are going to take place. Okay. And every time okay. every time you refresh that thing, it'll update. Okay. If we're trying to move troops from, like, land over the sea to a different area, how would we do that? Uh, it's just one zone per turn. So okay. if you move your navy, uh, for example, if I move 400 navy out into the Atlantic Ocean, um, and I've got, I'm taking 400 troops, sorry, I didn't. It didn't move on me there. Okay. Um, then I could move 400 troops into either one of these, F1 or F3. Okay. Um, and that could go, you know, I'm not going to do it, but 
that goes for anywhere that's connected there. So you could actually move out of the North Sea into the South Atlantic Ocean and drop troops clear down in North Africa because that's all in the same zone. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I'll probably have a ton when tomorrow comes. Well, don't don't wait till tomorrow. If you have them, just email me, and I'll try to um, be checking my email every hour uh, and try to answer your questions. I think a lot of it uh, will be answered when I get all the materials on there for you, and you read through those. You'll have a much better idea. Right. But you definitely uh, can email me questions or whatever, um, however you want to contact me. And we'll make sure that you know before then, because you're probably going to want to be deciding um, what your strategy is going to be for tomorrow. Might want to be in contact with Faith, too. Um, she's supposed to be France, and she said she'd be on tomorrow. So, um, Or anybody else that wasn't on today or, or couldn't figure it out. Hopefully they can figure it out tomorrow now that all of you know kind of what you're doing. And I know kind of what I'm doing. I'm kind of excited about this. This could be a game changer. You know, you never know the way things are. You never know when we're going to be out of school for four weeks or a month or whatever again. Hopefully not. 